Hi, you guys. Like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. Yeah, I probably should have more subscribers, I think. What do you guys think? <laughs> It's a rhetorical question. <laughs> um, okay, so here we go, guys. Why am I doing Dubai? I got really annoyed by the <sighs> Dubai reunion, mainly because there were so many things that were inaccurate, especially in part one, that really bothered me. And what happened was um, I had done a confessional video that was a real big, deep dive. And it was called Six Degrees of Separation from Epstein. And anyway, as part of that, um, I had talked about some theories in regards to Carolyn Stanberry's and the way she appears in the black book that Epstein has. Um, and, but anyway, of course, Naomi Campbell is in Epstein's black book, which was really bizarre that she called Chanel Ion at the reunion in the first like minute of the show. And I was like, that's so strange. Anyway, Ayan is walking, I guess, based on what Naomi Campbell asked her to do, a show October 25th in Qatar. And that got me thinking, uh, you're going to get a, this is not the video you think it is. I'm going to tell you that right now, like it never is, right? Like, I never give you the video you think you're getting. So <laughs> you're going to love this. This Hang is in. more than a Dubai reunion video. This is a Patreon request for a deep goddamn dive on this, some of the bullshit on the UAE crap that was in the Real Housewives of Dubai reunion. Shh. But it'll also have gossip in it. Lots of it. So Naomi Campbell has been spending a lot of time in Qatar. She's friends with the Princess of Qatar. In fact, she did a talk with her last year about abayas and extending couture fashion to include abayas design, which is the head covering and the robe that women wear. Um, and they actually uh, showed 15 couture abayas at this presentation about inclusiveness of couture clothing to include these robes. And Valentino's um, designer, I guess, was there and it was a thing. So let me show you those robes. The abaya is a symbol in the Middle East in Islam for women to have respect and modesty. And usually in places like Qatar, it's expected that it be black. This is a little bit of a, a challenge statement because obviously Valentino and the price point of Valentino is certainly not modest. Um, and of course, there's the modest interpretation, which is that you're not showing off, you know, any skin to the sun or to anyone else. Um, but there's also the modesty behind, like, not being ostentatious. And anyway, if you go and you look at Qatari websites, they'll say, like, I would prefer, you know, you should really opt for a black one instead of color. Anyway, the point is, it kind of was off message, this one, but the Princess of Qatar backed it. The Princess has been trying to make Doha, Qatar, a huge hub for culture. Now, Qatar is not alone in this. Uh, Saudi Arabia has been trying to show how uh, they're lightening all their really rigorous laws and rules and things like, you know, they'll throw you in jail for no reason. And you may wonder why this is. You thought all these Middle East people are the richest people in the world. You wouldn't be wrong, but they still need investment from the UK, America, Russia. Yeah, they need it. They need people like Bezos. Yeah, Bezos in Saudi Arabia, not doing too well at the moment. They bugged his phone. <laughs> he didn't like that. Uh, but anyway, um, the UAE is not Saudi Arabia, okay? That's really important. It's not Bahrain. It is something else. And I'm going to tell you what that is so you guys are clear. But they also have big human rights problems and criticism, which we're going to get into. And they have criticism as of this year, 2022. Just saying. I know everyone said, oh, but there was all this reform done this year. And oh my goodness. No, 
okay? Not magical enough, guys. This is a Disney movie. I would put money down that Stan Barry knows Naomi Campbell pretty well. By the way, did you notice that Andy Cohen in the Real Housewives of Dubai reunion had Chanel next to him and Caroline Stanbury? Those are the two breakout. Well, Caroline isn't the breakout star. She's been the star and the anchor of the show that they developed the whole show around. And that came out in the reunion too. But Chanel uh, is like a breakout star. She's basically been taking uh, lessons allegedly from other um, housewives that have been very successful on the franchise by lessons. I mean, calling them and asking them for advice, etc. And they've been giving it to her and she's been following it. Whether it's real or not doesn't really matter. It's more about like putting on a performance for the show and it seems to be working. There's rumors that Chanel is really mainly based in Boise, Idaho, and she just went out to Dubai for modeling as needed and the show for the last, you know, how many years. But Boise, Idaho, I bring up Boise, Idaho, not to criticize Boise, Idaho, but I mean, no wonder she's been trying to do the over the top thing and get designers to give her dresses and stuff because I suppose the more crazy her outfits are, the less likely you would be to figure out that she's from Boise, Idaho. <laughs> but I'll tell you what, if things don't work out in Dubai, I bet you she goes back to Boise, Idaho. Something that people don't know is that people in Salt Lake City go to Boise, Idaho a lot because that's like their jersey. And so it's rumored that Jen Shaw, who she, I guess, loves, 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 yeah, Chanel loves her. Actually um, met in Boise, Idaho. Basic. <laughs> Speaking of outfits that are over the top and not being basic, Caroline Stanberry's outfit, a lot of the fans hated. They were like, what is this librarian outfit she's wearing with crystals on it? And I kind of agreed. I'll show you a picture. But what was it? It Was so underwhelming and she is such an attractive woman she's got a great body and all this stuff I was like why is she so doity looking in it it was very bizarre and then I thought well maybe it's something else like maybe she's concerned about who is actually watching the reunion in Dubai and that was really brings me to my next this point. filter is to demonstrate her poor choice and outfit just saying, <laughs> in case you didn't catch Quick announcement that in my cease and desist, they said that you might think I'm a journalist. I thought the filters were a pretty good indicator that I am not giving you, you know, news like a journalist. I am telling you gossip, rumors, and stories that I get from multiple people. They may or may not be true. You can enjoy them and decide for yourself and use this for entertainment purposes. I'm starting to become one with the bacon filter. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> I just love that okay, one. Okay, so let's get back to business. I want you to listen to this part because it really pissed me off. People's perception of Dubai and your reality of Dubai, mm. okay? Because when the show was announced and then when the show premiered, there was a lot of criticism uh, towards us about doing a show in a country where homosexuality is a crime and where women's rights are infringed. So I want to know what what was your reaction to that criticism? Anyone? I'm actually shocked the other day I read something about America where women have no rights to carry their own have their own ex. You know, I don't know how it's called like when they take abortion. Your, abortion, yeah. They take the rights away from you. So there's a lot of rules everywhere in the world. But in Dubai, most of my friends are queer. You just have to respect the country and respect how people live their life. I think when people think about homosexuality in Dubai and it being illegal technically that, you know, when we say men and men and women and women can kiss in the street, that also goes for men and women. Oh, really? The rule applies to everyone. Okay, before we move on, let me show you some of the criticism. Now, to be fair, some of the complaints that this human rights movement were related to were to do with Saudi Arabia. Now, Saudi Arabia is not part of the UAE. UAE is managed by elected monarchies. 
He's also a president, a vice president, and a prime minister, and the monarchy can serve in any of those positions while also being the monarchy. Oh my God, by the way, on the Naomi Campbell call, my bullshit meter went like all the way to 10 because Naomi Campbell has pictures on her Instagram of her partying with Naomi Campbell, obviously doing other modeling jobs a long time ago, but still, like, they know each other. It wasn't random, okay? So... And by the way, you know what's weird is Naomi Campbell had a Horace Eye house and that same symbol, which is like, it's like a Horace Eye, but it's also the evil eye protection thing. Chanel Ion uses on her social media as a symbol. I was like, boy, this thing is getting hot. Everybody seems to be using this eye. Here's some random examples of that eye for you guys to know what I'm talking about. Abu Dhabi is the capital of this country of seven Middle Eastern states, if you will, which makes up the Emirates. Saudi Arabia is not part of the UAE, but it is bordering the country of the Emirates. And by the way, Bahrain, which is on the same plot of land as Saudi Arabia and where Saudi Arabia functions most of its business out of is actually a separate country. So there's Bahrain and Saudi Arabia and they are separate countries on the same land, Saudi Arabia being its own thing and Bahrain being another, but they often cooperate and Saudi Arabia does business out of Bahrain. And human rights in the UAE is sub par by groups like Amnesty International and those types of human rights groups, but better than Saudi Arabia, to be fair. Much better. Much, 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 much Just better. to say it to you, I loved Dubai when I went there for my 40th birthday and I had the most amazing weekend of my life at um, the Burj Al Arab and it is amazing. And I did run into some you know, I was told to just stay at the Burj Al Arab. When I went to the mall, I wore shorts by accident and they told me to go back to my hotel and put pants on, but they didn't arrest me. Um, and they were very nice about it. Um, it was, it's like fantastic from an experience perspective. But um, after making this video and other content, I probably will never go back and I've made that decision but I still want to, because I, I think it's important to say this. Yeah. They have a federal court system in the UAE, which has Sharia law as one branch, civil and criminal courts. They also have launched a new one that I think is to do with white collar crime. Um, I'll be telling you a little bit about that in a minute. Flogging is a popular corporal punishment in the UAE. Um, you know, 80 lashes, 100 lashes for drinking alcohol or... Well, let me get into the detail of this because it's so interesting. Okay, let's finish the rest of what was said at the reunion really quick. Oh, yeah. oh, a gay oh, a gay couple can yes. Oh, really? Oh, yes. Okay, well, I thought they could. No, just don't make out. I think you want to make out. Yeah, I would watch you in such a like that. It's like, it's like no so hold on, so straight couples yeah. cannot no. kiss on the street? No, no. Not. Okay. Because it's just out of respect. Sarah, I want to hear from you. So, so the UAE is a melting pot. There are so many religions in there, and there are so many cultures. So the PDA is not because it's a Muslim country. It's because they don't want to offend anyone's culture or religion. Yeah. I also want to point out, there was some speculation that this show was being funded by the government of Dubai. No, no, no. And I just want to say categorically no. that that's, that's not, not true. true. Yeah, video, yeah. So is Real Housewives of Dubai on in Dubai? Yes. yes. And so what's been the response? We had a, like a, a backlash. You had a backlash in Dubai? In Dubai. Yeah. 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 And what were... The housewife. I'm like, no, no, this is not a documentary. Right. <laughs> they didn't understand the background of it, so I had to come out literal. and explain. When we started the Housewives of Atlanta, mayor of Atlanta said, this show does not represent Atlanta. <laughs> okay, so in case you missed it, one of the main things said there was that gay men can hold hands in Dubai and walk down the street. And I looked at a real recent post from um, an LGBTQ site that helps people visit Dubai. 
okay? It was done in June of 2022. And they don't recommend it. And I thought it was really important to make this video because Andy kind of makes it sound like, hey, everybody, grab, grab your LGBTQ group and go down to Dubai and it's gonna be all right. And it's just not accurate. And I mean, unless you see Andy Cohen in a rainbow shirt, holding hands or you know with a guy down the street in Dubai I wouldn't suggest you do it. So I'm going to read you something to be I want to say I'm not overreacting, okay? Capital One is definitely a sponsor of their travel credit card of the Dubai show. All right? So I I really get a sense that the whole idea is to get you to want to travel in general and to Dubai. And although Andy Cohen says that the government is not paying for the show, which is interesting to me, but let's just say that he's 100% correct, right? There is not a way in hell that the production company and Bravo isn't conversing with the government to make sure that what they're doing is okay there. 150%. You don't do anything in UAE without the monarchy stamping its approval on it through one of its ministers or officials, or you'll end up in a lot of trouble, okay? So I, I really didn't appreciate the way that they like downplayed that. And element. we already know that Stan Berry had her house gifted for free for the show from Middle Eastern companies. So like, who's to say that these Middle Eastern companies don't have government officials that are investors in them or the prince himself? Like, it's ridiculous. I mean, Twitter's biggest shareholder is a Saudi Arabian prince, and they use it to disseminate information about the feeling of their own royal government. I mean, come on. Jeez. I know that Bravo thinks we're just idiots, but like, it's too much. And I'm just going to read this to you. And I, I have family members that are gay, and I would not recommend them going to Dubai. Okay? I'm just saying. Um... Here's what this was, this blog. This blog is Gay Travel to Dubai, Safety Tips, Bars, Clubs, and Hotels. Now, not everything in this is right, too, by the way. Did you know that in Dubai it's illegal to use a VPN? In this article, it tells uh, men that are in Dubai, if you want to use Grindr or you want to use you know, those apps to use a VPN and get around it that way. But that is actually illegal in Dubai. And I didn't understand why it was illegal until I read this. We've been to Dubai several times, mainly to visit some of our gay friends living there. Before we went for our first trip, we had serious concerns about our safety because of the harsh anti-gay laws. Despite this, we've always had a great time in Dubai, albeit taking extra care to avoid all public displays of affection. In this article, we set out our practical tips for gay travelers to Dubai, as well as information about the underground gay scene, best places to stay, things to do. Okay, and then there's a big note on it that says Grinder and Scruff are illegal and blocked in Dubai. And then they make a note like you can use a VPN, but they obviously didn't know that that is illegal. So I wanted to say that to you. It is illegal to use a VPN in Dubai. I'm going to go on. Now, this article was written July 20th, 2022. Homosexuality is illegal across the entire UAE can, and can lead to capital punishment. However, each Emirate has its own legal system, with Dubai the least severe, whereby homosexuality is punishable by imprisonment and or a fine. Like in many Arabic countries, homosexuality is a massive taboo and is not accepted by society. Being openly gay in Dubai is therefore dangerous. Dangerous. Whether you're a local or a foreigner, the reality to gay tourists who wish to visit Dubai is that you are unlikely to encounter any problems as long as you avoid all public displays of affection with your partner. This is why that reunion shit was lethal and irresponsible and I don't care if it's, you know, not a docu-series. So but here's their advice. Avoid all public displays of affection with people of the same gender. Unless staying in a hotel you know welcomes gay travelers, book a room with two single beds, whether one 
uh, whether it's two queen beds or one king bed and a twin. Be careful with who you hang out with, especially when meeting people on Grindr. Take care with what you post online before and during your trip. Perhaps consider selling, setting your social media channels to private if posting anything obviously gay. Anyway, they list their favorite hotels and they are American based, mainly hotels like Hilton. So that I guess, you know, what happens in those are like safe. In Dubai, you're not allowed to take a picture of a person without their permission. That's illegal. You're not allowed to, as the women mentioned on the show, have alcohol in your home without a liquor license. You are not allowed to uh, drink alcohol in most places, only hotels that have that license as well. And you're not allowed to be visibly intoxicated anywhere because you can, that's illegal. It's also illegal to swear a lot in public or give someone the middle finger. Of course, when you're filming in any location, anything formal, you have to get permission from that location, which is normal in the US, we do it too for, for shooting but they also like to run it by the government as well, depending on where you wanna shoot. And you absolutely can't shoot anything that's related to military or government uh, buildings. Oh, let me read you this, this is nice. As reported by the state news agency WAM in November, the legal changes in Dubai, which are their recent reforms, um, include amendments to over 40 laws, including on crime and punishment, cyber crimes, drugs, aiming to strengthen economic investment and commercial opportunities, in addition to maximizing social stability, security, and ensuring the rights of both individuals and institutions. While the changes allow for moderate broadening of personal freedoms, the new legal framework retains severe restrictions on the right to free expression, association, and assembly. This one particularly interesting. Human Rights Watch conducted a comprehensive legal analysis of two of the new laws, the Crime and Punishment Law and Cyber Crimes Law, to identify any changes related to the rights to free expression and free assembly. Both laws went into effect in January of 2022. The laws continue to prohibit criticism of rulers and speech that is deemed to create or encourage social unrest, imposing severe penalties for vaguely defined charges. They maintain provisions that criminalize defamation and both verbal and written insults, whether published or made in private as prosecutable offenses. New provisions criminalize false and misleading information, sharing information with foreign groups or countries, and offending foreign states. Protests and demonstrations would still be prohibited. As far as drugs are concerned, some of you guys wanted to know that. There is no drugs allowed in Dubai, and if you're found, you'll get a severe prison sentence. They just recently tried to allow CBD oil, and the lawyers in Dubai are not yet sure how that would go. They are supposedly, you're allowed to do it, but it's risky. They don't really know how they'll handle it if they choose to arrest you with CBD oil. And they basically said, just wouldn't come with it at What's all. What's so crazy, you guys, too, is that I looked up prostitution in Dubai and guess That's what? I wanted to know about this because there's a lot of rumors on Reddit, there's some people in Dubai who's been sending out like emails to people, influencers with gossip about certain people coming from certain backgrounds that are questionable in the escort arena. Um, and so I was really curious about this. So it turns out that prostitution is illegal in Dubai. And there's severe punishment, like you can be deported if you're a foreigner, you go to jail, you can go to jail and you can also have fines. But I found this really interesting article from March 29th of 2021, and it says the rise of sex tourism in Dubai. I thought you'd love so to hear This article it. about Dubai says that European women, whether Russian, Ukrainian, or Western, are in the highest um, like caliber of desire. An Arab escorts are the most desired because they're the rarest to find and this is like the hierarchy of hookers hooker hierarchy <laughs> terrible okay wow 
Talk about objectifying Listen people. Listen to huh? this. Oh my God, I could take this to so many places in my head. The number of active prostitutes in Dubai is sometimes estimated at 45,000. It is, of course, impossible to know this number precisely, it is, as it is based on a complex system where Emirati nationals authorized to, quote, sponsor the entry of a certain number of foreigners on residence visas give these sponsorship rights to intermediaries without necessarily knowing the real activity of the future, quote, immigrants. The residence visa system, despite its 2016 reform, continues to allow this type of manipulation. While the networks dismantled tend to concern the lower end of the prostitution market, the transaction often concluded without intermediaries accredits the illusion of an absence of pimping even though it is inconceivable to offer such services in Dubai without solid protection. The UN, the UN published in 2017 the testimony of a, quote, sex slave from Uzbekistan who, after 18 months of nightmare in Dubai, preferred to let herself be arrested by the Emirati police in order to be deported. More recently, it is Bangladesh that the revelations of victims of this type of trafficking lured to Dubai by false promises of domestic employment have been broadcast. So based on this article, which I'll put in the description, it would appear that the women um, are either found in hotel, upscale hotel environments, or it's coordinated, um, or they're brought in under one purpose and then it switches to a sexual purpose. And that can include um, even just domestic servants. So, um, yeah. Caroline Stanberry calls Lisa a prostitute on the Real Housewives of Dubai Part 2 reunion. So can you imagine how nervous Lisa must be to go home to Dubai? Because that kind of gossip is, we've already been told, really dangerous um, to have out there in Dubai when you're living there. So when Caroline made that attack, that was no small, like, you know, housewives bitch slap. That was mega. Now, I believe that Caroline Stanberry thinks that Lisa stole her designs because she posted a bunch of stuff on Twitter about it, which I'm going to share here. I'd say Bravo masked a huge feud that actually occurred on camera during that reunion because I think they talked a lot more about the allegations of prostitution against Lisa and what Caroline heard. And I think they also talked a lot more about Caroline feeling like her designs were stolen by Lisa as well as um, other designers. They, they cut it weird. Anyway. Lisa shouldn't feel too bad. There's accusations of at least one, two, three Real Housewives of Dubai cast members and non-cast members that are related to not counting her, that are related to rumors that are similar to this. Just to mention it, guess who just got on the board of a startup in Dubai? P.K. Kemsley himself. So he's been going over to Dubai, obviously. So Phaedra's doing business in Dubai too. And rumor is she's trying to, or she's talking to Andy Cohen maybe about joining the Real Housewives of Dubai as she's looking for a house in Dubai now to maybe permanently reside there. So I thought you guys would find that interesting if you didn't already know it. There's so much dark gossip about Dubai. Wow, it's like insane, but I can't talk about it because it's just too crazy. Anyway, I'm going to put in the description of this video some really great links for you guys to check out, including Human Rights Watch. Well, anyway, from a tourism and investment perspective, Real Housewives of Dubai is a real treat, and it's doing exactly what I would imagine the UAE was hoping to do with their law reforms in 2022 that didn't quite get there. But it's a fun show, I suppose, and there's lots of fun things to see in Dubai. I mean, as far as the characters are concerned, they all seem like they are transplants there. They don't, they're not really a representation of Dubai culture, um, but that makes sense because Dubai is a, a whole bunch of expats, you know, group. 
Um, it doesn't seem to really demonstrate the real life of Dubai outside of maybe a week vacation. Um, not like two day to day life, I don't think. Um, the biggest hypocrite on the reunion, surprisingly, is Andy Cohen for the show being a proud gay man and doing his show in Dubai. But let's just put that aside. I'm going to try to think the best of Andy. And I'm going to think that Andy is secretly a manipulator. And what he's going to do is use the power that he's getting from the Real Housewives of Dubai to secretly pressure the monarchies in the UAE to support the LGBTQ community. Isn't that a nice way to look at it? instead of just totally selling out. It may surprise you that the person I'm most interested in is Sarah Almadani. Sarah actually, this is a picture of Sarah from a few years ago, and then I'm gonna remind you what Sarah looked like at the reunion, her outfit and stuff. Sarah has worked with the government before in Dubai, and she's from the UAE. She also has done TED Talks. I think I've talked about that on previous Dubai videos, which are very interesting. So why am I most interested in Sarah? Because Sarah actually has an MO to show UAE in a more modern light and to try to make people really excited about the UAE um, you know, forget the human rights issues, just the current modern UAE. And so, well, let me play you nice. something. Now, point number seven, dress to impress. Now, when I say dress to impress, I'm not talking about what you see on social media, this heavy makeup and this, I, I don't know, sometimes I go on social media and I see girls posting pictures of themselves going to work. And I go, how do you have the energy to do this in the morning? Dress to impress does not mean looking fabulous and, and beautiful, just like social media sells the idea for us. No, it means feeling comfortable in what you're wearing, wearing something clean, wearing something nice, wearing something that represents your position at what you do. Whether you're working, whether you have your own company, you need to dress to impress the people around you. You are an example. You are a brand. You are your own brand. What is your brand? Now go and represent it. It's very important. And, and don't, don't get me wrong, it's not about wearing you know, the top designers, it's not having a, your full contour makeup done. Even for the men, it's not about buying the most expensive suit. It's about feeling comfortable in your own skin, feeling comfortable in your own clothes. It's very important. And I always say, in the morning, when you wake up, before putting your clothes on, put your confidence on first and then wear whatever you want to wear. It's the most important thing to wear. Wear your confidence because people realize that. It's, it's that, that pair of clothes that nobody can miss. So it's very important. And don't follow the trends. Be who you are. Dress the way you love. Feel comfortable. I always, I always wear to all my meetings shoes with, with straps and I, and I tie them with my abaya all the time and, and it's fine. It's who I am. Wow. Well, that was only 2019. That didn't age well. Who she is doesn't seem to be that girl anymore, wearing her robe and tying her sneakers and not into a lot of makeup. Wow. I feel a little lied to, don't you? The reunion, as we heard earlier, Andy defers the question that's really tough to answer about the UAE to Sarah, about, you know, to do with the government. So I thought that was really... Hmm, right. Now I get it. You notice he does that. And, and I just want to read something from Sarah's resume on her, uh, because I happened to notice on that last video clip that it says, Her Excellency Sarah Al Madani. Her Excellency. That's so important. No? Like a royal person. So in almost. 2014, she was selected by His Highness to be a board member of Sharjah Chamber of Commerce and Industry. And then in 2017, she was selected to be on the board of UAE SME Council in the Ministry of Economy of Dubai. She's also uh, served on the, as a board member at the SHG, I'm sorry, SHJ Scene Board of Trustee, which is the Sharjah Chamber of Commerce and Industry. She's been Minister of Economy 
as a board member of SME Projects and Enterprise Council. I mean, it sure does sound to me like she's got a lot of government relationships, the board membership she's serving on that have to do with the exact kind of messaging that Real Housewives of Dubai is doing. Just saying. Bottom line, she's in with the highnesses of UAE. <laughs> so it may surprise you that it's very difficult to get a divorce in Dubai. And Sarah's been divorced twice. If the couple or either of them still insists on divorce, the papers will be forwarded to the court for the judge to study the case. The judge will discuss it with the couple and listen to witnesses. It could take a couple of sessions before the judge makes his decision. The couple needs to attend all the proceedings. A woman may be granted a divorce if she can prove that her husband has physically hurt her or mentally tortured her. A woman also may sue for divorce if her husband abandons her for a period of three months or if he has not taken care of her needs or that of their children. The law allows a woman to obtain a kula, a separation, when she returns the dowry to the husband. The Sharia court will accept a divorce lawsuit from Muslim men or a Christian or Jewish women married to a Muslim and apply the Islamic laws. The divorce applicants are both Muslim, but from different countries. In the UAE, they will be divorced according to the administrative laws in their country or the UAE law, whichever they wish. While Sharia is same in all Muslim countries, there are a few administrative differences between the various schools of thought. If the couple are from the same country, the law of their country will be applied to the UAE law if they wish. Ajman is the fifth largest city in UAE, so I don't know, you know, if what the particular divorce uh, procedure is there, but it is going to be similar to Dubai and the rest of UAE. But the Muslim aspect does make it a lot more complicated. Can you imagine being divorced twice? It's really like not embraced divorce. I, you know, they really want you to try to work it out. So twice is really not typical. And she seems so spiritual in the show, huh? <laughs> Maybe she's bad taste in men. I, I do. <laughs> well, anyway, from a tourism and investment perspective, Real Housewives of Dubai is a real treat. And it's doing exactly what I would imagine the UAE was hoping to do with their law reforms in 2022 that didn't quite get there. But it's a fun show, I suppose. And there's lots of fun things to see in Dubai. I mean, as far as the characters are concerned, they all seem like they are transplants there. They don't, they're not really a representation of Dubai culture, um, but that makes sense because Dubai is a, a whole bunch of expats, you know, group. Um, it doesn't seem to really demonstrate the real life of Dubai outside of maybe a week vacation, um, not like two day-to-day -day life, I don't think. Um, what did you think about the reunion and what do you think about Dubai and the show and Andy doing a show in Dubai as a proud gay man and the characters and the fact that we never see their houses. Just kidding. Ah, like subscribe, hit the notification button. This was a special one. A few patrons requested it. That's why it's long. That's why it's deeper than my usual YouTube videos. I aim to please. I work for them. Okay. Mwah. Love you guys. And uh, I don't know what can happen to me and how long this will last and if they decide to release me, like how my life will be. But um, I'm not safe at all. <laughs>